morning, good morning, good morning. Why? Why what? Did you do that? Three times? No, the hat. Oh, the bucket hat. I don't know. I had a burrito yesterday. I figured I'd have the uh, tortilla hat today. And then I slept in the burrito blanket yesterday <laughs> that our friends at Seattle Cocktail Club gave us. You know, first off, to everyone uh, commenting about all the chicken questions mm. in the trivia earlier, it is National Fried Chicken Day. According to that national calendar website, do the national days change? Like, do you ever say, oh, it's national blank day. I want blank. And yeah, now I want fried chicken. Yeah, absolutely. Is the fried chicken pop up? Huh? Is it still there? The fried chicken pop up? Oh, we can check. I kind of want Popeye's though. No, no. If it's national fried chicken day, you have to support local. Stop doing that. It's not national small business fried chicken day. It's just (laughs) national fried chicken day. No, you have you have to stop doing that. Doing what? I like Popeyes. I don't have to stop doing anything. <laughs> um, the other thing I realized yesterday, I said that I slept in that uh, burrito blanket that our friends at Seattle Cocktail Club gave mm-hmm. us. And I realized yesterday when I went to go sleep on the couch, how much Max, your cat, controls my life, Carla Marie. Oh, we got a hype train going. And Max was sleeping on the regular blanket that I use. It was like folded up yeah. on the side of the couch. So I just left her there instead of moving her to get my regular blanket. The burrito blanket, as comfortable as it is, is still very small and it's round and it doesn't like I can't cover my shoulders and my feet at the same time. She would 100 percent have been moved. That were me. Yeah. I mean, eventually she decided to get up and sleep like next to me. So then I got my regular blanket. She slept with you the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What else is going on in the chat? There was something that I read a little while ago. Thank you to Heather for the 500 bits. Thank you to. Josh from Indy for uh, giving out a tier one sub and J Mills 1888 for cheering with 100 bits. Damn, there was a lot before that too that I can't catch up with. But thank you, everyone. Appreciate uh, Robbie you. and Everett, appreciate you. We are through level two. Crap, we don't have a drink with us here. What? What? Shanna said, Is anyone going to the Marines? Like in. Uh, Mariners no, game on Thursday is what you Oh, the Mariners game. Uh, I'm not, but if anyone else in the chat is, let Shannon know. And we did not get the 500 viewers yesterday. So, but the challenge is still open. If we get 500 so viewers at the same time, we'll then decide a food challenge. Am I doing this? You don't have to. You could if you'd like. Well, Mellow FM, thank you for the Woo-hoo. five gifted subs. Appreciate you. Okay. And let's see. So today we're doing a bachelorette recap. Yes. Um, when should we start that? Uh, maybe right after the the hype train is over. Okay. So that way we can like take the shot and then do the bachelorette recap. Is that cool? Mm-hmm. Uh, I did something for the first time yesterday since moving to Seattle. And that was, if you're familiar with Seattle, um, I walked around Green Lake. Mm-hmm. As cr- and Green Lake is a place that I think everyone in Seattle has gone to at some point. And I've been here for five years now. And yesterday was my first time going. It's crazy. I could like, I, especially cause you trained to, well, you've gone to restaurants in Green Lake. Yes. And not like on the actual lake. And you trained to run a half marathon. Mm -hmm. That was when we first moved here. But like, that's a big place runners go because it's what? Three and a half miles around. Something like that. Yeah. So you just, you know, do it a few times. Why'd you do that? I was oh, you're spinning. Okay. Um, yeah, I just had never gone. And it's it's a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. And everyone has told me how much they like it. I know people that go there almost every day. Every day. Like as their break if they yeah. live in the area. Yeah. And I want to start doing this. And I think no matter where you live and regardless of what your uh, career status is, I want to start doing things. And we've talked about it a lot where you kind of become a tourist in your own city. And you do the things that people normally do when they visit, but we take for granted because we live here. Like I haven't been to the space needle in probably two years. Yeah. But like, that's, it's a cool place to go. It is though. cool, And they have drinks now. Yeah. And they're, they have the glass bottom floor that rotates all of that good stuff. Um, I want to go back to Smith tower. I haven't been there in like three years, but I think you and I have been to the space needle more than someone who's lived here their entire life. Probably. Cause we've had like events there and stuff like that. Columbia Tower, I haven't been to since the week that we, or like the month that we moved here, basically. 
Oh, wait, no, I ran up the stairs of the Columbia Tower once. That sounds miserable. It was pretty miserable. It, I mean, it was cool to complete, but that was about it. So I was thinking yesterday, it's funny you bring that up because we have not had this conversation off the show. I wanted to put together a blog of like our favorite or go to things in Seattle. Oh, crap. I have to do that actually for restaurants because our friend uh, Hollywood Chris from mm -hmm. the iHeart Station mm -hmm. down in San Diego. Yeah. He's coming up here with his girlfriend for the weekend. Originally asked me for restaurant suggestions. So I told him because it's for her, yeah, it's for her birthday. Told him to go to M Bar. Ooh. But it is booked for the weekend, so I've got to give him a bunch of other reservations. Did you give him my special M bar link? Have we talked about this? No. I will right, we'll talk about this in a second. Okay. But um no, I want to put together a blog of like favorite hike, favorite restaurant, favorite pizza, favorite ice cream, favorite like just do the Carla Marie Anthony show favorites of Seattle so that when cool. people ask, which they always do, we can actually respond with something. With a link? Yeah, of instead like, of being like, I don't have time to type right now. Well, since I have to do, um, since I have to give Chris recommendations this week, maybe we can do that soon. Okay, don't put a timeline on here. Oh, okay. okay. Once there's a timeline and a deadline, you don't want to do it? Okay. Yes. But it is a good idea because people often will <laughs> message us for suggestions. Hey, I'm in for the city or in for the weekend for work or whatever. Like Gemma said, you've done more than me and I've lived here my whole life. Yeah, I think when you move to a city, we've talked about this before. When you move to a city Wild professionally. Child never what? been to Space Needle and I lived here my whole life. But again, this is stuff that like even if you go to New York, there are people who have never been to the Empire State Building or One World Trade mm -hmm. or any of the other the Chrysler yeah. building. But when you move as an adult, it's different. And I think you, you try to like throw yourself into the city because mm -hmm. you don't take it for granted as, as right. the people who grew up in that area do. Have you been to the top of the rock in New York city? So I ran up it. The I rock? ran up. What? Or top Empire of the rock is the Empire state building. No, it's not. Top of the rock is top of the NBC building. Is it? Oh, then I haven't been there. Oh, that's Rockefeller Plaza. Center. Center. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Why. Well, the, the plus is there. Whatever. I ran up the Empire State Building for a charity run. Mm -hmm. Actually, got all the way to the top and then found out because normally the way you finish that run is you do a lap around the observation deck. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But time. it was in February and we had just had a snowstorm in New York and there were sheets of falling ice. Mm -hmm. So they closed that part down. So I literally ran all the way up and they're like, hey, congratulations. There's the elevator. And it went right back down. But you didn't see I didn't anything. See, I did not even look outside. So that's the only time you've been up there? Yep. Oh. Yeah. You should come when I do the Christmas thing with my family and we go there. Mm, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, level five of the hype train. We're 7% of the way there. That just started. So if that does <laughs> go through, I'll run downstairs, grab the bottle of Jack Fire. You love stairs, Martha said. Yeah, I, I'm always on stairs, apparently. Okay. So I had said I have a special link. I don't... So apparently... I have booked a few reservations at M Bar here in Seattle over my time here. And by few, I mean maybe three. Mm -hmm. And I've used Open Table. I get an email, and it's clearly automated, but they did a good job because I feel very special after uh, Anthony's birthday dinner. And it said, Hey, we appreciate our reoccurring customers. Moving forward, use our manager, and then like said their names, their link. And it's like a specific booking link. Okay. And it was like, we, you know, we like to take care of our recurring customers, blah, blah, whatever. So what does that mean? I don't know. I haven't clicked it. <laughs> but is it like, if it's booked, can you use that link and I get wonder if they a have, table? they like keep certain, re what is going on? Certain reservations. Or so they, they just could, lied to me to make me feel special. So probably. I tell people I have a special link to Embark. <laughs> probably just so you book again. 280 people in the chat, 220 to go to get to 500. Thank you, Andre. But, like, what does a VIP link get you? It's Madeline's personal booking link. Who the hell's Madeline? And to make a reservation. Do you know what the M in M bar stands for? No. Huh. What is it? Memnoon. Oh, yeah, because it's the same as the Memnoon restaurants. This is a very inside Seattle discussion. We are going to get into The Bachelor in a second. If you watch that, please hang around because a lot happened yesterday. And some people got sent home. And it seems like the regular link. It seems so like they just sent you another link. It seems to make like they just don't want me booking on open table. No, I guess I used theirs. I don't know. It's Madeline's link. It's special. So they just they bamboozled you to be like, oh, my God, I'm so special. I need to go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cup is full. The cup is full, but the hype cup or the hype train is not done. But I will clear that cup. Give me one second. 
Um, otherwise, how's everyone else doing in the chat? Anything going on? Anything crazy in your lives? Still didn't watch it. Was going to tonight. Tacoma Swifty. Mm -hmm. We will. Uh, I mean, there will probably be some spoilers. It'll still be enjoyable to watch if you hang out here. What? What? Crazy Dream Girl said I'm pregnant. That's pretty crazy. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, and speaking of thank God, I was just going to say this. Jill um, just popped in here. She said she had her baby six weeks early. Oh, wow. And I didn't realize, Jill, I feel like you've been in this chat, and I didn't realize you had your baby until I saw our messages last night. So congratulations. Congratulations. Hayden, right? I believe what the baby's name was. Tim the Viking is in the chat. How's it going? Oh, my goodness. You were born six weeks earlier. Yeah, I was like five or six weeks, something like that. And this is what you can look forward to. Yeah, God bless. Hopefully he end, ends up better than me. Hopefully he's employed um, by the time he's my age. Augie, unfortunately, so... Oh, no, we only have a minute left for the hype train. Augie doesn't live in America, so we ordered his merch with our order, and then we're going to mail to him mm -hmm. there were three people we had to do that to unfortunately since we've ordered like one of everything our merch order is getting here absolutely last mm -hmm. and we live on the opposite side of the country from the warehouse so it's going to be some time before your order makes it yeah i'd say it'll probably get to us next week yeah and then we'll have to ship it out overseas mm -hmm. um all right 50 percent of the way through the hype train level five we got 40 seconds left let's see if we get there because if oh, that's we right. do, okay, you ordered through your friend who lives in Maryland. I apologize. Because if we do, I'll have to run downstairs and grab that bottle of Jack Fire. 70%. 20 seconds left. I tell you what. Oh, I no. crushed it at Berries yesterday after that Jack Fire. Oh, who just got us through? Steph, Steph. 625. Thank Sometimes you very much. I wonder if it's truly worth it. What? Because now I got to rip a shot. Yeah, exactly. So it is worth it. I think that's what people like to see. If it was just me ripping this shot by myself. We'd never get through the hype train because I I do it so professionally. But it's like comical to watch you take you a shot. You can't take a shot professionally. Sure you can. There's No, there are certain things that cannot be done professionally. What if you're a bartender? I've bartended in the past. Yeah. What if you're a professional eater and drinker like you do food challenges? Go get it. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, Emily did a mini photo shoot in her shirt. Send it to us. Um... I've been asking everyone to send us the actual photo. Like, yeah, tag us in it if you post it. But please actually send us the photos because if you tag us in something, we can't, like, do anything with that picture. I can't make a photo gallery or anything like that. So if you send us the actual photo on Instagram at Carla Marie and Anthony, that is a huge, huge help. You can also email it to us, Carla Marie and Anthony at gmail.com. Some people, I, I'm trying to catch you before you get your package and record a video of you opening it. So, yes, please. And thank you. It was most likely me who replied, Emily. Um, I put a bunch of them in the newsletter today. Best way to get us a photo is Instagram, Carla Marie and Anthony. Yep, just DM on Insta. Don't send it where it's like a vanishing photo, though. Make sure you send it, like, keep in chat. Um, I'm going to drop this link in here. So, Seattle Cocktail Club, we talked about yesterday because they just announced Seattle Cocktail Week 2022, which is... Thank you for everyone. I just saw the hype dream complete on this screen. I know we talked about it already, but it just popped up here. Um, that Seattle Cocktail Week is happening 2022. And if you buy your ticket now, you get it for $20 off. So I'm sending that link. And also at that link, it's going to tell you about the pop-up, Boozy Bodega pop-up that I'm we're going to actually be at. So we're going to make it a mini meetup. Isn't it kind of weird? 2022 for some reason sounds like it's so far in the future. Like 2022 sounds Happy like year the away. year that oh. we would have watched in a movie or as like in a world where everyone has died from a civil war mm. in 2022. Yeah. Three Americans have to recreate the world. I don't know. That was the worst movie in America. But it does sound like is it because of Mars 2112, that restaurant? In Maybe New York City? it sounds similar to 2022. Maybe. What's there now? Is that that restaurant can't be there? anymore? No, right? they replaced it. I Have you ever eaten there? No, never. Oh. I used to uh, walk by it all the time when I was working for my dad in the city. I went with my brother. Because we would have to park there and then walk over to the jewelry district. We'd park like right there. Yeah, 2022 sounds so far away. But it's not. 
don't know what's You ready, Carla Marie? No. Warm shot of Jack Fire. No, the, the Boozy Bodega is August 6th. Damn, awesome. Sarah ordered new gummies this weekend. Sweet. <laughs> Mars 2112 is a core memory. Is core memory like an actual thing? Or are you just saying like it's a core memory? Like is core memory something scientific that I don't know about? I don't think so. I've never heard of it. All right, pick one of those two cups, Carla Marie. Also, I know Carla Marie was just talking about them, but shout out to Saddle Cocktail Club for introducing us to Jack Fire. This is my my new oh. go-to shot when I go out. It Dreamer said core memory is a reference to Inside Out, which is the movie I keep telling you you have to watch. Yeah, I'll watch it one day. You ready? Mm-hmm. Carla Marie? Mm-hmm. You're not ready. Cheers. Oh, wait. We, hold on. Let's start. I hate this whole thing. Clink. He's the one who invented there. this. Here we go. Ooh. You all right there? Are you breathing fire? You know, it's- it tastes like a big red. You know what? You did a, a pretty good job, though, this time. On an empty stomach. Did you have water or anything today? And a gummy. It's just swirling around in there. <laughs> what happened to the movie list in Sandra Anthony fashion? I just kind of fell off. Um, we were doing something else at the time where I had to take a break. Oh, we were traveling. And then when we came back, we just never started it again. I think um, Ghost is the next movie that I was supposed to see. Mm-hmm. I can start it up again. I can watch Ghost tomorrow. But I am very excited because the movies are, like, officially back, like, going to theaters and yep. stuff. Ooh, uh, oh, here oh. in Ballard, Majestic Bay opened, which is, like, an independently owned, as far as I know, an independently owned movie theater. Yeah. It's not one of, like, the big companies. And I was really – both Carl and Marie and I were really hoping throughout the entire pandemic that I they were going to be able to remain open. They remain open, and they're giving out free popcorn on Fridays. Really? It's, like, outside the theater. Oh, like you just show up? Well, that, that popcorn cost them like nothing. But they also weren't making any money. So that is kind of nice of them. Um, but they're showing what Black Widow like all day Friday. Mm-hmm. They just opened up this past weekend. And I'm very excited because not only is going to the movies one of my favorite activities. Like I've gone to the movies by myself and I am all totally OK with it. I love sitting there watching a movie, not looking at my phone the whole time. And with my big ass thing of popcorn, big ass soda, huge screen. Um, but that theater specifically, because it is like a locally owned theater. It's so cool. And it's kind of old school. It has like a shipping theme to it. When you walk into the doors, they have like yeah. the little port windows. It's really cool. So I've I've really just wanted that place to stay open. Like that was my one wish throughout and the pandemic. I really. feel like their snacks aren't that expensive. Like Becky from Miami said $70 in snacks, but it's not. They aren't as bad um, as. Not there, no. So I think we might go to Black Widow on Friday. Okay. Depends on the weather. Because right now, it's freezing here. But th- it's but half the temperature that it was a week ago. Yeah. What is happening? There is something about going to the movies, though, even if you go by yourself, that is very, it's like therapeutic. Like for me, like I can, it's almost like meditation for me. Like I go and I zone out and I just watch the movie. And I actually tried this the other night. Because I feel like when I watch things at home, I'm always on my phone or I'm doing other things or I'm like organizing or whatever. I watched Army of the Dead on Sunday night. Oh, that zombie movie? The zombie movie. I'm having nightmares about it a bit. I watched Army of the Dead. Um, It was a good movie. Better movie than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really terrible. I was just watching because uh, David Bautista was in it. But I made sure to not check my phone the whole time. And I just sat there on the couch. I had some popcorn. And it wasn't as good as the movie experience. But telling myself to just sit there yeah. and not check anything else, it is like a weird form of meditation. What, Carla Marie? DPB said that Army of the Dead sucked. I thought it was better. That It was better than I expected. I went in with really when low someone expectations. someone says it's a funny zombie movie, like Anthony pitched to me, I'm like, this is going to be horrendous. 
Yeah, I, I went in with really low expectations. And it wasn't as funny as I thought it would be. There were, like, comedic parts in it. Um, yeah, Jordy said it was funny as hell. Yeah, the German guy was was a good character. I wasn't... What is I don't want to, like, give a... If people want to watch that, I don't want to give too many spoilers. Um, but I, I wasn't expecting it to end the way it ended. I guess is all I can really so it say. Was a good movie. It was a good movie. Because good movies, do good movies end the way you expect them to end? Because doesn't a good movie end the way you don't expect it to end? No, I think some of the, I think some good movies can end by wrapping up all the things that, all, all the, the different storylines mm -hmm. and letting you like leave and say, okay, go enjoy your day now. Mm -hmm. Don't think about this movie ever again. But I have to think about it ever again. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, a lot of people pleasantly surprised. Like, yeah. I don't know if it, it wasn't. And this is where I think I would be a terrible movie reviewer mm -hmm. is a movie has to be like. Absolute hot garbage I've for never, me to say yeah. that it's not good. Yeah. The only movie there are literally two movies in my life that I would say, don't even waste your time. It is a terrible movie. Um, one is Batman and Robin. That's the one where Alicia Silverstone was Batgirl. And uh, I think Arnold was Mr. Freeze. It was just a bad, bad movie. The other one was one of the Transformer movies where I went to go see the the premiere for or the screening. Oh, hot garbage made no sense. Yeah, like I don't. I can't even think of a bad movie right now. Like I don't you can't think of one. No, I don't. Because I normally enjoy my experience. If it's a bad movie, it's probably something that like the artistic world loves, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like you just don't understand it. Yeah. Okay. That's. But I am so. When people are like, oh, what's your favorite movie? I'm like, I don't know. I like all of them. Ao twenty nine oh seven. You did not love Batman and Robin. I'm sorry. Or was it Batman Forever? Which is the one that's the really really bad one? Um. But the reason I say that is. The one. As long as I was mildly entertained for the time that I sat down to the time that it ended, that's all the movie had to do for me. Like, every movie doesn't need to be fantastic. Also, great time to shout out Movie Mike and this movie podcast. Yes. Really great podcast um, by our friend Mike D, who works for The Bobby Bones Show. He had Amy on this week, and he does something really cool when he has guests, and he, he did it when I was on the show, is he gets to know people through movies. It's awesome. So he'll ask you, like, oh, if... Who would play you in a movie? Um, what movie describes your life? What's the first mov movie you remember? All those types of things. So you get to know people through this platform that we're, that we're all familiar with. So definitely check out that podcast. I shared it. I shared the Apple link because I didn't want to share the evil company link. So everyone's saying Batman Forever and Batman and Robin were pretty bad. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I'm not one who nitpicks movies. Mm -hmm. So... I wouldn't be a good movie reviewer. Like I've well, gone you to these... reviewed all those movies that you watched. That was different though. Um, but when we, when I, when I get to go see the premieres that we're invited to, usually they'll have people asking you how you felt about the movie as you leave. And I'm usually pretty positive. And I remember like I've walked by people who were being super particular. And I guess that's what you're there for. No, no. As the, a movie reviewer. Okay. We saw 1917. Yes. Oh, yeah. 1914? 1917. 17. The war movie. Mm-hmm. And it was like a media preview, mm -hmm. which we're getting to go to the media, media preview for Space Jam, and I'm so yeah. excited. So we go to this media preview, 1917, and we're leaving. And we're like, that was a good movie. 1917. Wait. Is that the one with Harry Styles? Or I'll check. One? You, you keep talking, and I'll get the name of the movie. And we're walking out, and there's these two guys that probably have some YouTube channel with 12 views. I don't know. Like, they were movie reviewers. And... 1917. What did I say? You said 1914 originally. No, I or didn't. Or was it the other way around? You said 1914. Okay. 1917 Can you is tell me what 1917 is about? Is it Harry Styles or the other one? Yeah, that's the one. Um, no, no. Dunkirk is the one you're thinking of okay. with Harry Styles. 1917 is the one that's shot like very cinematically. It's like there's zero edits. It, they're the cinema, so it's all cinematically. No, it's not. <laughs> you mean first person? It's not first person. No, it would actually be like it, there's second no edits. person. Third person. It's just the camera following them. It's like yeah. a reality show of a movie. Yes. Anyway, we leave. 
And we overhear these two like movie nerds talking to each other. And the one guy's like, I don't know. It's pretty unrealistic. Blah, 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 whatever. And they're just like going back and forth. And all we could think was like, you weren't there, bro. Like, yeah. you don't know what it was like in 1917. You can't say it's unrealistic because you weren't fucking there. Yeah. And to me, it seemed actually pretty realistic. Yeah. It seemed like that's and, what you would deal with if you were in World War One. And, and that's the thing. Like, we walked away. We were like, wow, that was like wild. Like, you truly felt like you were there. That had to be crazy. Like, imagine that was your life. And then these guys like, like pretty eh, unrealistic. I don't know. I just don't feel like it was what war was really like. I was like, dude, you've probably never know. been. No. So, well, I mean, they could have been, but I don't, mm, think they were. I don't think they were. So, yeah, that's why I don't I don't trust the damn movie review as far as I could throw it. I don't know. something my grandma. <laughs> How I often have you thrown movie reviews? My grandma would always say that. I don't trust them as far as I can throw. Them. Um, But yeah, so if you haven't seen that, by the way, that's a movie. 1914, 17, 17 1917. Jesus. Um, that. <laughs> you do need to put your phone down and like not you need to make sure all of your chores mm -hmm. are done. If you got kids, they're either at someone else's lock house or room. locked in a closet somewhere. Just make sure you can focus solely on that movie because it is an experience. Like it's one of the few mov movies where I can say it was an actual experience yeah. to sit there and watch it. I, I we were what, like five minutes in. I leaned over to Anthony. and I was like, have they made a cut yet? No, it doesn't. I mean, if they do, they do a really good job. I think there's like two points in the movie where I can be like that was probably a cut. Because there there are ways they like. The screen goes black for a second and there's one where they go into the water. And I feel like that was also a cut anyway. Not a big not. Uh, the most interesting thing, I guess, if you haven't watched the movie, mm -hmm. but you should. 19. 17. 17. For fuck's sake. <laughs> what happened in 1914 that you love that year so much? When did the Titanic sink? 1912. 12. Ask me another one. When did Columbus sail the ocean blue? 1942. No, it was not 1942. 1492. <laughs> I messed that up pretty bad, huh? <laughs> that was three years before my dad was born. Columbus got here. <laughs> Your dad's pretty old. <laughs> so maybe... And they're both Italian, right? Was he though? Oh no, Cl Columbus was he Italian Spanish. or Spanish? There's like, uh, anyway. Uh, watch the wrong Missy. I've heard that's a pretty good movie. I actually, I don't think I can. I think it's too raunchy. What? It's raunchy. The wrong, the wrong Missy. What do you mean raunchy? Like vulgar, dirty. Which I guess you know what show I'm loving that you're watching. What? The Andy Dick, but not Andy Dick. What's his name? He's like the new age Andy Dick. Little Dicky. Little Dicky. He's not the new age Andy Dick. They're totally different. Their names are the same. The Little Dicky show is fantastic. If you've so. got Hulu, I highly, highly, highly suggest watching it. Um, we are like three quarters of the way through season one. I started in the middle of it. But my brother has told me that season two isn't as good, which is happening now, I believe. Mm. Or it's Think on demand now. we can get now. him on the show. Little Dicky, I he's a very busy man. He does a lot of things. Although when I was in Los Angeles most recently, right before I got to the airport, my cousin Michelle and I went to uh, grab breakfast burritos. Mm -hmm. And where we parked, which was right next to the breakfast burrito place, there were signs that said uh, the spots were reserved for a Little Dicky production. So they were filming either a music video, an actual music video for his him. production company is called Little Dicky Productions. It said something. It, you could definitely tell it was Little Dicky. Wow. Um, so he was either filming for the show or some sort of music video, but it just said like reserved for a little Dicky project or something like that. Wow. Mama cool. Mallory said, we just finished watching Yellowstone, which was a my so day Friday good. recommendation three years ago. It was great. Yeah. I, we did find out though recently that normally Yellowstone is a summer show. It usually starts in June, ends in September or mm -hmm. something like that. It's not starting season four will not start until the fall. I don't know. They've pushed it back. I don't know if I'll be watching. Why? I have issues with that show. That's stupid. My issues are that there is so much shit going on that my anxiety, I don't relax and enjoy watching some shows, and that's one of them. And there's got to be some You're sort crazy. of like, there's got to be someone who relates to this. It's got to be called something like 
cinematic anxiety. I don't know. Like, even the zombie movie, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. Like, what is going to happen? Like, Avengers, I can deal with because it's like, it's well, different. Well, Marvel movies are also, they kind of fall into like the action comedy thing. Yeah. I'm telling you. Like, there's no comedy in Yellowstone. Yellowstone, I'm like, I got to go to bed. I can't, I got to leave. I got to, go. I need CBD to watch that show. You're making me anxious the way you're talking, actually. But that's what my body does. <laughs> well, I hate it. Um, I don't know. I love Yellowstone. I think it it's is a good show. It is the Sopranos, but set in the West, where it's like, and they're not necessarily a full crime family like the Sopranos. So I can't really com- make that comparison. But there's something like that, where there are some shady things happening. Shady is what I said, by the way. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I, it is. I guess a stressful show, but I okay. love it. Snizula said, "Oh my what? God, me too." <laughs> I can't watch uh, two stressful movies. Emily said, yes, yeah, cinematic anxiety is a thing. Mama Too Mad said, I hate being stressed watching movies. That's why I stick to Hallmark movies. And then Renee said, I always read spoilers. It makes me feel better. See, I think because it is tougher for me to pay attention to movies that don't have like constant drama or action or whatever, I think that's why I like those movies. Where if it was like a cheesy Hallmark movie, like I'm going to be checking my phone, I'll go do the dishes, I'll make some food it doesn't like lock me in as much as the high drama high suspense action type movies so like you'll those things lock me you'll in. do the dishes during yellowstone but not no, during no, the no. zombie movie no no no. Okay. i'll do dishes during like a hallmark movie like that oh, oh, oh. or like that ne- cheesy netflix uh radio movie about our, mo- our lives yeah not really about our lives but yes um are you gonna watch the saints of newark so i've actually brian Never watched a full episode of The Sopranos until last week. And the reason I started watching it last week is I'd like to watch the entire series before the movie comes out in, I believe, October. So it is cool, though, watching it, seeing the intro and all the places that I recognize from, like, my life growing up in New York and New Jersey. And seeing them, like, because they did shoot in those areas in New Jersey oftentimes. And uh, it's cool seeing that. Also weird seeing, because it was, at this point, when did The Sopranos come out? Like 2002, maybe? It's kind of crazy. Like, it's an old show now. I watched the first episode ever the other day. Like, that's it. Uh, Let's see. P. Pearl said, just finished the series for the first time. Is that The Sopranos? Oh, 99 to 2007, so it's even older than I thought. Oh, P. Perry? Shout out, James Gandolfini, R.I.P., Rutgers grad. And then his son is going to play – his son is in the movie they're coming out with, The Saints of Newark, or whatever that show – whatever it's called. It was just there. Okay, we're going to ask Lee's question, and then we're going to move on to Bachelor okay. Recap. Lee says, Anthony, this is random, but what do you think of where the Fast and Furious franchise has gone over the years? It used to be so focused on cars, but now it's just Vin Diesel and The, and the Rock fighting bad guys and also flying to space. So, I'll add that. The Rock was not in the most recent one, <gasps> um, but I did go see Fast 9 when it opened. And the people who really loved the early movies in the Fast and Furious franchise – by and large, from what I've heard from them, have hated the new movie. Okay. The new one, Fast 9, Fast like, Saga. did you hate it? I did not hate it. Why not? Like, mainly why because, did you hate it but all these others? Mainly did? because I was never someone who was, like, into the car culture. So even though I liked the movies, I didn't, like, have a bond with, oh, they're talking about this exhaust and this clutch or whatever. Like, I didn't care about that. And I also go into the movies now especially since The Rock joined, and I'm just expecting to see craziness. Okay. This one was the craziest that I've seen, and the way that I've, the way that I've explained it to people is I think this most recent Fast and Furious movie is more like a Marvel movie than it is a Fast and Furious movie because – there are fight scenes with Vin Diesel where like his head is going through walls and like door frames and cement. But and, it's, and it gets to a point where it's like, oh, he's fighting like Captain America and the Hulk. Don't you say like that the Fast and Furious franchise is very self-aware? Yeah, it, it, it knows at this point that it's just 
it's a superhero movie disguised as a car movie. And I think they lean into that now. And there's uh, Tyrese's character in the most recent movie is kind of the voice of the audience where he'll say things like, guys, I think we're invincible. Like, I think, and it's, it's self-aware in that, in that way. I don't, but it, it is definitely not my favorite of the franchise so far. Why did they have to go to space in this movie? Um, because there was an issue with a satellite they needed to take down. Who sends them there? Bezos? Can't tell you. That's part of the movie. Bezos is not involved, though. I like I watched Fast and Furious because it was the cool thing to do in middle school with all the boys at the movie theater, and that was about the extent. Did you go to high school with people that had like those types of cars? Like with really loud exhausts from Pep Boys? My, my boyfriend Ugh. did. Ugh. He would. He had... Um, with a subwoofer in his truck. Okay, but that's more of a that's more of the And he had the thing, system. the pipe. <laughs> the pipe. <laughs> the exhaust? Yeah. And it was really loud? Well, not that not fast and furious loud. But he raced. Where? Not like <laughs> <laughs> This sounds so lame. Ex please explain. He had a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Okay. And he would race other Mitsubishi Eclipses. Where? Eclipse I. Eclipses. On Route 21 sometimes. But like, would they actually, was it just like driving fast or were they racing? Were they weren't racing for pinks though, were they? I don't fucking know what that means. Oh, for the pink slips? That's like, you can own the car once you win. Oh no, no one was giving up cars. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like what? They just got on the highway and they raced and they drove fast. Okay, I feel like just driving fast on a highway isn't racing though. Yeah, we I want them too like closing. Fast, I want them pure. closing down the street. No, we didn't do that. Okay. My husband used wow. to street race. He had a Mitsubishi Evo and never lost a race. That's pretty cool. Crazy dream girl's husband. Did he? Anthony's. Did he race for pinks as well? Did he win some cars? Marijuana said clearly he lived his life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> yes. That guy's now married with a baby, so he ain't racing anywhere. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've, I never got into, like, race culture at all. I had a Jeep Wrangler. I wasn't racing anybody. No, he would have beat you in a race, that's for sure. Yeah, I had a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> the thing went up to 100 miles an hour max. Of course he would have. And it was stick. <laughs> yeah, I also don't. When people are like, ugh, because I had a Jeep Wrangler, but it was automatic. Mm. And so many people would be like, oh, you have an automatic Jeep? You're a loser. And I was like, guys, I just want to do less work when I'm driving. Yeah, that's Like, fair. I'm not trying to be cool because I'm shifting my car. No, that's fair. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of the stick life, but stick life chose me. Let's see. People who race in Spokane are dumb and always end up crashing. I feel like that's an occupational hazard. Like, if you're going to race all the time, you're going to crash at some point. Alicia from the 215 said, my high school boyfriend used to race his Dodge Neon. Okay. Or well, whoever made a Neon. Uh, two Dodge and Plymouth actually both had Neons. Because I think they were the same company for a little bit when Plymouth was a thing. Let's get into The Bachelor. So it is now down to about 10. 16. It's only down to 16 guys now? There's still 16 men on that show? I'm pretty sure because she says it at the end. Jeez, that's crazy. Well, that's way more than I thought there were. But... Um, this episode on The Bachelor, we get a little more time with Blake. Bachelorette. Bachelorette. We get a little more time with Blake, who is the guy who was on last season of The Bachelorette. The mm -hmm. last two or whatever. It was a weird season. Um, and I guess he and Katie had messaged on Instagram prior to this season starting. He got himself on the show. He's a vulture. You can go back to that episode from last mm -hmm. week. And he may be a very kind man. When I call him a vulture, I don't mean he's a bad person. Right. He just does the thing a lot of guys do where the second you know a girl is available, you slide into her DMs and you're like, you're so strong and I'm proud of you as a human, blah, blah, blah. It's a vulture move. Okay. But and all guys have done it. I'm, I'm sure I've done it. So he shows up midseason and there is nothing more awkward than him walking into the room of guys. They don't even make room for him on the couch. I love that, actually, because this is what he did when he walked in. He does the whole, I know you guys don't want me here, and if I was in your position, I'd be mad too, but I'm here for Katie, blah, blah, blah. And all of the guys were just like, 
crickets. Like that's all you heard. Like they were they just weren't even really engaging in the in the conversation. My, and I loved it. My favorite part is Tasha comes in and she says to the guy, someone from like my past is here and blah blah blah. Like and they're like, Who do you think it is? Who do you think it is? She leaves. They and then there's like silence and then Blake walks in and they just cut to Aaron going, Blake. Blake? Blake. Oh, and, and I wanted to bring this up because you had mentioned something last week, Carla, me that you saw online. And if you remember during Katie's season of The Bachelor, mm-hmm. and I guess we would call it Matt's season of The Bachelor. Right. <laughs> um, who was the girl that showed up randomly? Heather. Heather. So Heather shows up, pulls up her white minivan to the gate. This is during like the height of COVID. So things are locked down for the most part. And Heather is made to look like a crazy person for showing up during Matt's season. Mm -hmm. Blake does not have that same fate. Mm -hmm. He's taken seriously and he's in love, so on and so forth. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's so sexist. The girl shows up and she's the crazy girl. But the the one big difference, I actually think it's Tasha who makes Blake – she gives him the validation he needs to she's enter because she woman. says, yeah, she says he's from my season. He's an, he's a good guy. Like she keeps talking him up yeah. so that you, it didn't give the audience an opportunity to do what they did to Heather where she rolled up on her own. Mm-hmm. And even Chris Harrison, when he was on the show, he goes to the front gate to talk to Heather and he's like, Heather, we're locked down. Like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to be in quarantine for two weeks if you want to join. So Heather didn't have someone vouching for her and Tasha vouches for Blake, which makes him look not crazy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was a a sexism thing. And yes, I I think that we all oftentimes look at women as like the crazy girl. McClung said they did Heather dirty. They did. And I don't even know if they did Heather dirty because I don't I don't know what her backstory was. I think they just propped up. I think it's more of propping up Blake than doing Heather dirty. Mm -hmm. That's fair. You know, but it's also how they edit it. And she showed up on her own in a minivan. The other part of it was because she quarantined for two weeks, they did all those quick cuts. Yeah, but they they did all those quick cuts of her in the room by herself. And everyone just looks crazy at that Mm -hmm. point. So, yeah, maybe they did her a little dirty, but. I wanted to get that out of the way because Blake is being treated very differently showing up mid season than Heather is. Yeah. And Katie alludes to something with the guy. She says something like, Oh, when Blake first showed up, I was unsure whatever. Like he clearly was there for a few days because wasn't there someone that caught like a, her a wardrobe thing her, the outfit she wears when she's having the conversation with Blake is the same outfit she wears on the group date with Nick Vial, which was two weeks ago. But we only saw that conversation with Blake last week after a bunch of the dates. So it seems like he's been there for some time. And probably quarantining and doing what he's mm-hmm. got to do. Um, I don't – I'm not fully sold on Blake yet. I don't think he's a crappy person by any means. And he might be there because he felt a connection when he and Katie were DMing on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So who knows? I think – that also, the fact that he had a little bit of an interaction with Katie. Um, Speaking of vulture-ish, though. So we talked about how guys swoop in when girls get, like, let go. Broken up with. Yeah. Um, I listened to Nick. Is it Vile or Vial? Either way. I listened to his podcast with Katie called The Vile Files or The Vial Files. I guess it's It should vile. be Vile because that know. makes sense. Um, And she says that whenever any girl was getting like sent home from Matt season, I guess previous seasons, but Matt season, her group knows this, that guys from other seasons would automatically reach out to them. Vultures. But it gets better. They wouldn't necessarily text. They would send video messages. So Blake would send video messages on Instagram that disappear. So there's all the guys did this. So even more vulturish. All of the guys did yeah. it, she said, so that there was no proof that they were messaging. This is honestly like, it's like the sophomore guys in college reaching out and Facebook requesting or Instagram requesting mm-hmm. all of the freshmen that come in. It's because you know you're part of this larger group now, and you're like the cool guy who's been there before, yeah. which is what Blake was, yeah. reaching out to another contestant who's newer in that, that little fraternity mm-hmm. of people. So they're all – and again, Blake's not a bad person, but just like all of them and most guys in the world, a vulture. Yeah. 
for sure. That's that's all it is. Um, and yeah, I think the having your messages disappear because you're sending Instagram videos, like Snapchat that's videos, weird. basically a little creepy, and just reestablishes, reaffirms the fact that they're all vultures. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mc- no, McClung. Char Munchkin said, I feel like their convo on the one on one with Blake was so scripted. So I don't know if you're referring to when they're at dinner. I find this very interesting because Katie w- tells this story again about how 10 years ago she was drunk at a party and didn't give consent mm-hmm. and sex happened. Like she, she tells that something she, happened. Something happened. Sorry. She tells that story again. I haven't talked to Katie about this at all. There are a few options here one we're watching a tv show so let's remember that there's the option of producers saying as they're filming her with blake we may not show that converse part of the conversation of that group date let's have her tell that story again okay blake wasn't here for that let's catch him up on that because we don't know if it's going to come up again um or they just obviously had to happen again. And the reason why they kept it in, I said to Anthony was, which pisses me off that this is the reason they saw how well people responded to it yeah. last time and thought, let's bring it back. Yeah. And, and that is a little sleazy mm-hmm. from a uh, TV production standpoint, but at the same time, it drives home a conversation that probably needs to happen more often than mm-hmm. it does. So I think you take the good with the bad in that scenario. Yeah. You know, like I can't, as long as it's being spoken about in a respectful and honest way, I can't really get mad at that discussion mm-hmm. happening. Um, but the big thing from last night's episode, so she gets a one-on-one date with Blake, which is definitely set up by the producers because he shows up and then gets the one-on-one date. Oh, yeah. But because a lot of the guys are like, oh, they probably think Katie's the one but that's also, asking for I would one-on-one wanna, dates. I would, she, no, she also says, I want to... Have a date with him right away so I can decide if there's something there. Yeah, and all the guys are mad about that because Mm -hmm. he's the new guy. Get some time alone with her. And then there's a group date where they're playing some form of rugby basketball. Bachelorette bash ball. And I don't know. I, I think this is exactly what the producers expected when they set it up. When you throw a bunch of competitive athletic men who are competing not only for a woman, but for TV time and notoriety Mm -hmm. in a, in a very physical contact sport where you're bringing each other down and you can hit each other as hard as you want. Like bad things are going to happen. And who's the guy that gets completely laid out? Michael A. Michael A. Who's the dad from Ohio. Correct. He gets, and he's like one of the smaller built men on the show. And he gets popped in the back. By one of the largest guys on the show. And Justin, right, is his name? Yeah, and I feel like Justin felt pretty bad. Oh, he did. And you could tell that they, they were all caught up in the moment. And But here's what I'll say about previews. Previews make it seem like Hunter is the one. Yes. Hunter does tackle. They say Hunter is the reason like everything got out of control. Yeah, they're but all they... playing like kind of fun at first. And then Hunter, <laughs> Hunter pulls like a DK Metcalf, comes from all the way to the other side of the field and just pops someone right at the basket and that's when i think everyone agreed like yeah the the energy and the Mm -hmm. testosterone was like dialed up a notch i don't i haven't liked hunter i don't know why he's been there this long yeah well something interesting happened with hunter yesterday i don't know what people were tweeting about him but katie tweeted something about along the lines of before you Tweet anything negative about the guys on the show. Remember, there's a lot you don't know about Agreed. them. Agreed, and that's why I turned and, out to be. And me. then she said that Hunter has Tourette's, mm-hmm. and, and I wonder if the thing people were tweeting was the he, fact that he sniffles. He tweeted. He posted about it. Oh, okay. He was like, to everyone saying that I am sniffling or sniffing or whatever. He's like, I've had it mild Tourette's my whole life, and that's just what I do. Yeah, and I don't think. I think now that it is out, it makes people like if you don't. If you know that and you're still tweeting about it, it makes you an a-hole. Yeah. I think beforehand, though, if you just think this guy's sniffling randomly, you can tweet about it. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the show's fault for not yeah. letting the audience know. But I think, I think Hunter also could have gotten a bad edit yesterday, right? Like maybe they took every clip of Hunter saying this is a competition. Maybe Justin was also saying it's a competition, and they just don't put it in. That's what I think. 
unfortunately, this is what happens. Like, yeah, it's entertainment and we want to be a part of this, but it's reality TV and we're only being fed 37 minutes of content in two hours or whatever it is. Like something insane, 90 minutes. I, I, I do think that, that that's part of the truth, right? I think the producers and the editors will edit the show and show you what is convenient to their narrative, right? But I think what we saw yesterday, and we've talked about this before, we've talked about it with Molly, we've talked about it with Taylor mm -hmm. and even Katie, you get to a point in the show where you've been there for two, three, maybe four weeks. All you've done is interact with those people. You have no interaction yeah. with the outside world and you view things in a weird lens where the only thing that matters is winning. And is that person, it's the main, what, what do we call them? The, uh, the lead. And with the women that we spoke to, oftentimes, what? Yeah. Uh, oftentimes they would say that you're kind of brainwashed into thinking like the only thing that matters is the guy's opinion, mm -hmm. the lead. I think what we saw with Blake or no, with Hunter yesterday was the moment where his mind switched yep, from being that. a contestant to being in a competition that he has to win no matter what. Because the things that he said, mm -hmm. very few of them were about Katie. It was all about, I'm going to be the, the last one standing. I'm going to be the one that's going to get the most you time. You would have that. Oh, like I absolutely would. I'm not saying he did it. I don't, I'm not even saying it as a bad thing. Right. It's just we saw that flip, that switch get turned on mm -hmm. where he was like, he is in competition mode. Yep. And the only thing he sees is getting a rose every single week and getting more time than everyone else. And I don't even know if it's about Katie at this point. No, it's not. I don't think he'll be there. I don't. I can't see him being there. Um, Tori Grace said, you guys, I really want to know what happened to Aaron's hand. Did you notice it was wrapped up? No, maybe I he heard it during the game. Mm -hmm, maybe. There's a very good chance he heard it during the game because, I mean, they were lighting each other up in this yeah rugby basketball thing which looks like a fun game to play like i would 100 percent like to play that neon climber said do you guys have any idea who's this other person who shows up no in the preview no something tells me it's someone from this season coming back why would that even happen i don't know i felt like it was like gonna be thomas has that happened before maybe but i don't know the only way it like would, who would it be is it, it's either someone from her previous life like a real person in her life. Well, they're or... all real people. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I can't see it, especially the way she sent Thomas home. She's True. the one that he like, she was really aggressive with, right? When she sent him home, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. your audition for the bachelor is over thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't see it being him. Cody? I don't even know who Cody is. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. What if it was uh, Matt? What if Matt from The Bachelor came back because he was like, I sent Katie home way too early. Oh, God. No. I want another chance. No. Have you seen the meme that's like it's the burn book and it's like all the guys deciding who they're going to attack next week? Yeah, I do think it's interesting that the guys on this show, this season specifically, and I've never watched a full season of The Bachelorette before, but... It does seem like they they have like a survivor the TV show mentality yeah. where it's like we all need to figure out who we want out next. Mm -hmm. And I think Blake is that guy. Yeah. I I don't know I how think, they're going to do it, but because if he's he knows better, he knows to give them any information that they could run with because he's done true. it before. It is funny. Did you, did you see catch it? I can't even talk. Did you catch it yesterday when uh they were confronting Blake about his like stealing time from people because he already had a rose which i do no, think is hunter hunter jesus wait I keep... so you meant hunter this whole time not blake yes <laughs> i keep i don't know hunter looks like a blake anyway you kept doing that yesterday i was like hunter, what are you saying hunter 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 who was the guy that was tackling people got a rose he even though he had a rose so he was going to go through the next week took a lot of time with katie during their cocktail mm -hmm. night and when he came back and the guys confronted him about it, they called him a Thomas and he got so offended that I love he the was fact like, I'm that, not calling you. I'm not saying you're like him, but, but it was like a Thomas move. He's like, yo, I'm not a Thomas bro. <laughs> it was just, I loved the fact that Thomas has now become like an insult. Yeah. 
Oh, Andrea, is that you? She said, I think it's someone who hasn't gone home yet who shows up. They will go home and come back right away like Hunter or something. That's Andrea, our photographer. Wait, what? I'm confused. The person who shows up. She think it's someone who hasn't gone home yet. Will get sent home and come back. But that's not allowed. It is. Like Taylor got sent home on next season and showed, but like. Oh, yeah. And then she came back. Came back in the same episode. But yeah, like, I forgot about that. Um, also, I agree with Court, who says, I think there should be some unspoken rule that people with roses sit back during the, the cocktail, cocktail ceremony night. and stuff. Um, I agree 100 percent. You have a rose. But guess what, back. guys? That's what producers want. If that happened, there would be no drama. Yeah, that's true. I need to find out from Katie how much she's still deciding during that rose ceremony. Like, does it, uh, the cocktail party, does it even matter? I think she's probably just trying to put out, like, some feelers. I think she probably has her people. Maybe there's, like, one or two that she's still deciding. Neon what? Climber said, I just found out who it is. It's going to be another drama-filled person. Did you Google it? Okay, don't tell us. No spoilers until the actual episode airs next Monday. Because if I'm not getting spoilers from Katie, I don't want them from the chat. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It Again, it is rude that the guys with roses are taking time yeah, during that setup. ceremony. They were like, but, he has a whole setup. They were all mad. It's like, dude, you could have made that. But uh, but like Carla Marie said, for TV purposes you and know, for producers. The producers 100% went to Hunter and were like, Hunter, do you want to put a telescope outside to spend time with Katie during the cocktail hour? Like, where? Like, we need to stop being that dumb to think that shit happens. Well, even even the date cards. I don't think Katie is deciding who she goes on a solo date or a group think, date with. I think the later it gets, yeah. But uh, let's see. James came in looking like a Bond villain to take Katie from Hunter. James, I have like a very torn I'm um, very mixed feelings on James cuz I kind of want to like him but I also hate the way he dresses. Wait, that was Hunter's telescope from home? Yeah, he brought it. Oh, I missed that part. Um if you watch Jared Freed, who's the comedian that we went to go see with Katie mm -hmm. here in we went to Tacoma Comedy Club, he does live screens of the show where he reacts to things happening on the show and he's like screaming about it. Follow him on Instagram. He's hilarious. Yeah. He brings up James's his chain, his chain, his is. solo, his solo thin gold chain. It seems outside silver. of his turtleneck. No, it's gold. Mm, is it? Yeah, pretty sure it's gold. Um. Anyway, it is time for us to get out of here. We will be back on Thursday, so make sure you're here again. If we get to 500 people, we can set up a food challenge. Thank you for filling up that hype cup towards the very end. We'll make sure that we uh, have some shots ready on Thursday. Until then, Carla Marie, anything? I was trying to think if there was anything, but there is. Nope. Bye. See ya.